eternal Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we come before you as representatives of various nations and Christian traditions. We want to begin this new millennium with a public confession of sin before God and the Jewish people here in Jerusalem where the church began. Dear Jewish friends, as a Christian from Germany, my iniquities have overtaken me. As Germans, we have more cause than anyone else to confess our sins and the sins of our people. In deep shame and contrition, we come before the almighty and merciful God to confess the crimes and injustices perpetrated against the Jewish people down through the centuries, for which the Christian church bears heavy responsibility. We therefore repent and plead with Almighty God that he might have mercy upon us and forgive us for what we and our forefathers have done. We pledge ourselves to work tirelessly against anti-Semitism in all of its forms. The words of the Holocaust survivor Elie Wiesel. He said the following, my people has had innumerable enemies. We endured discrimination, persecution, many forms of isolation. We survived the Crusades, the Inquisition, the pogroms, the various results of ingrained anti-Semitism. But the Holocaust went much farther indeed. Never shall I forget that night, the first night in camp, that turned my life into one long night, seven times sealed. Never shall I forget that smoke. Never shall I forget the small faces of the children whose bodies I saw transformed into smoke under a silent sky. Never shall I forget those flames that consume my faith forever. Never shall I forget the nocturnal silence that deprived me for all eternity of the desire to live. Never shall I forget those moments that murdered my God and my soul and turned my dreams to ashes. Never shall I forget those things, even were I condemned to live as long as God himself. Never. Shortly after this picture was taken, Elie Wiesel was deported to a death camp. More than 50 years later, he spoke to the full German parliament, the Bundestag. I am here, and I remember 55 years ago. I remember and if I were to tell you what I remember, you would, like me, tremble. A 
as the death camps are liberated. The full extent of Nazi atrocities become known, horrified at the depths of depravity they have uncovered, Allied commanders decide that average Germans must have known and therefore condoned what was happening in their midst. Thousands are rounded up and brought to the camps. As here at Buchenwald, they are forced to view the piles of corpses, the crematoria, the lampshades made of human skin. Many are sickened by what they see. They turn away in horror and disgust. I was arrested two days after World War II broke out. That was my first camp. My parents took me to the train station. My mother told me, bleib ein guter jüdischer Junge. Stay a good Jewish boy. And the last time I ever saw my mother. They were deported from our hometown and sent to a concentration camp in France. I had a grandmother who lived with my parents, 85 years old. She walked with a little suitcase to the train station, as did Jews from all over our town in Mannheim. And people saw them. They didn't go by bus, they could, were not allowed to. They walked. It's about a 20, 25 minute walk. Now, how many Germans saw that in Mannheim? Thousands of them. Now, they didn't know where they were going, but they knew something was happening to the Jewish community in Mannheim. So, the feeling that I have, a deep feeling, is that while not everybody knew, most Germans knew that something was happening to the Jews. They were not there anymore. It was on the 10th of November, 1938, when I went to school, and there was a, other bo a boy running on the other side of the road, shouting to me, the Church of the Jews is burning. And the whole day, nobody remarked on it. No teacher, no classmate. It was just hushed up. And on a, my way home, I went another road, and I heard strange noises, like breaking glass. And then I saw where it came from, the house on the corner of the street. And I could see how these preserves in glass jars were thrown out of the little pantry window and dashed into the backyard. And I realized the sleeves were brown sleeves of the man who throws them out, so I knew who did it. And then I went home and shared with my mother what happened and said to her, let us go to bring some food to these people. And to my shame, I had to have to admit that after our meal, I had forgotten what happened just two streets away from us. And not only for this moment, but for years, it was buried under the trivial things of every day. And later, I realized under a thick layer of indifference, and complacency. 
Of course, all Germans were not Nazis. But I can tell you again as a witness, I remember in those times, the word German inspired fear. We were afraid when we heard that the Germans were coming. But one courageous German woman cannot turn her back on what Germany has done. Clara Schlink had already defied Hitler in the 30s. As women's division president of the German student Christian movement, she was repeatedly questioned by the Gestapo for continuing to teach the Old Testament and referring to the Jews as God's chosen people, both forbidden by the Third Reich. After the war, at her parents' home in Darmstadt, in a small attic room, she founds the Evangelical Sisterhood of Mary, the first group of Protestant nuns in Germany since the Reformation. The sisters call her mother Basileia. She leads them in prayer and repentance. In 1956, as 300,000 German Protestants gather in Frankfurt for the Kirchentag, a five-day rally of Germany's evangelical church. An event takes place that marks the beginning of the repentance movement in Germany. A play written by Mother Basilea is performed by the sisters. It powerfully depicts the long history of suffering and anguish of the Jewish people. Thousands of Germans in the audience leave in tears. The sisters perform the play throughout Germany and spread Mother Basilea's message that the German people must face up to what they have done and repent for the evil visited on the Jews during the Holocaust and for 2,000 years of Christian anti-Semitism which preceded it. Today, living in many countries throughout the world, including the United States, more than 150 sisters and brothers continue to teach Mother Basilea's message. We can't change what's happened for the last 2,000, 3,000 years of anti-Semitism, both pre-Christian and Christian but we can make a commitment to go forward and, and fight it together as Christians and Jews. In deep shame, we deplore the atrocities committed during the Middle Ages as the Crusaders en route to the Holy Land attacked thriving Jewish communities in Europe, looting and killing as they the went. The Black Death was blamed on Jewish communities leading to a horrific persecution where thousands of Jews suffered an agonizing death. The cruelties of the Spanish Inquisition, which first coerced thousands of Jews in We the acknowledge baptism. with grief the inflammatory and untrue statements of esteemed church fathers, which helped pave the way for the Holocaust. Dachau and Auschwitz, Buchenwald and Tremplinka, Sachsenhausen and Warsaw. The shame of the history of the church is really overwhelming. And I must be a voice now to speak up because we can't allow this historical shame to continue. We can't. Um, it, isn't, it isn't what our scriptures teach us. It's not who Jesus is. When one repents, one also makes restitution. So how do you make restitution for 2,000 years of Christian anti-Semitism and the damage that's been done and in the name of the one that we revere? How do you do that? We look back at how the teaching of the Christian church paved the way for these horrors of our times. Then repentance moves within to see ourselves and our own attitudes in a new way. We see the arrogance of Christian attitudes through the centuries. Although the church has received everything we know about God through the Jewish people, there is an assumption of superiority which the church has been warned against since the first century. We confess that arrogance here before our Jewish friends. 
the forcing of Jews to undergo baptism as an alternative to exile or death. We, we deplore, deplore the false accusations of ritual murder, desecration of the host, and conspiracy costing thousands of innocent Jewish lives. We, we deplore. As Christians, we are guilty of attempting to steal Israel's birthright by claiming that we, the Christian church, have replaced Israel. That we are the new Israel and that the covenant belongs exclusively to us. This we have done in complete disregard of Holy Scriptures, which declares concerning Israel, they are God's people. He made them his sons and revealed his glory to them. He made his covenants with them. He gave them the law. They have the true worship. They have received God's promises. They are descended from the famous Hebrew ancestors and Christ, as a human being, belongs to their race. Lord, we confess our covetousness. Forgive us, we pray. There's anti-Semitism in Germany like it is in the United States, in France, in Belgium, in Holland, it's all over. This goes back 2,000 years to the teachings of Christianity. The Jews killed Jesus. It's not so. The Romans killed Jesus. But because of that, I, my family, millions have suffered. Now there is no atonement we Gentiles can offer which matches what we have done to the Jewish people. We cannot even ask your forgiveness and indeed to expect it would be a form of emotional blackmail that compounds the offense. We can only come with repentant hearts. When I thought what I could have done, I could have visited this family, I could have made friends with them, and they had just to face terrible anguish and pain. And I stood far off. I was passive. For a Jew, it is rewarding to see Christians, good Christians, uh, faithful Christians, who realize that the past of Christianity is, uh, for us Jews, a source of anguish. It's good to see that these very devout Christians, that's how they describe themselves, coming from so many countries, realize that the time has come to recognize that Christianity has to atone for much that was done to the Jewish people all over the world, at least in Christianity, in Christendom. We need to protect and ensure the survival of the Jewish people. Now that's not that different from what others were saying. Where a group like Evangelical Sisterhood of Mary differed is that they then stopped and said, okay, what do Jews think will ensure their survival? And the Jewish community was clearly, and still is, saying, you want to ensure our survival, don't just cry over our past. Help us survive now and in the future. In 1961, Mother Basileia expands the Sisterhood's ministry to Israel, founding Beth Abraham, a place where to this day survivors of the Holocaust are welcome to spend time and recover. In 2001, Another of Mother Basileia's lifetime dreams is realized as Christians from around the world gather in Jerusalem for a service of repentance. 
led by a distinguished group of Christian clergy of many denominations, reciting a liturgy that Mother Basilea herself has created. Sadly, she could not attend. Just weeks before the service, Mother Basilea dies at the age of 96. I found a word in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, and actually the Lord himself says it. No one repents of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? And this has struck me. No one says, what have I done? And we Christians, have really waited much too long to say to you, the members of the Jewish community, what have I done? I have often been asked to forget and even to forgive. Again, the old line, turn the other cheek. How can I forget my arrest, taken with my father and a crowd of Germans standing there, watching us, spitting on us, and yelling, Sau Juden. My mother murdered in the gas chambers, only because she was a Jew. How can I forget this? And to forgive? I do not have that right. Only the martyred can forgive, and they are not here. Forgiving, I cannot do that. I can never forgive, I will never forget. None of us survive, I have the right to do that. That is maybe for future generations. But uh, there are things that we can do together, and I welcome the efforts made by Germans today and non-Germans to try to make up for what happened, to apologize. Perhaps the time has come for you to make a gesture that would have worldwide repercussions. President Rao, you met a group of Auschwitz survivors a few weeks ago, and then one of them told me that you expressed something very moving. You asked for forgiveness for what the German people have done to them. Why wouldn't you do it here in the spirit of this solemn occasion? Why wouldn't the Bundestag simply let it be known to Germany and its allies and its friends, especially to the young people, that you ask the Jewish people to forgive Germany for what the Third Reich has done in Germany's name. And I said what I try to, to, to communicate. I don't believe in collective guilt. We Jews don't believe in that. Only the guilty are guilty. Children of killers are not killers but children. However, I said, the generation of today is not responsible for the crimes committed by maybe their, their, their grandfathers or fathers or so, but they are responsible for the memory of what happened before. And this is what I said, this is for you to the, the important. And then I, I even did something which was maybe out of place. I turned to the president, I said, President, why uh, doesn't the Reich, the, the, the Bundestag here, uh, ask the Jewish people for forgiveness? But they did, never did. So I said, why don't you ask for forgiveness officially? I am not sure that the Jewish people for, could forgive, but you must ask. I bitte um Vergebung für das, was Deutsche getan haben, für mich und meine Generation, um unserer Kinder und Kindeskinder willen, deren Zukunft ich an der Seite der Kinder Israels sehen möchte. 
And believe it or not, a week later, the president of Germany went to Jerusalem, to the Knesset, and officially asked the Jewish people for forgiveness, which means occasionally words do carry some weight, and, uh, and I, I felt good about it. If we as individuals failed in the past, then may we all together as individuals make a difference for the future, beginning with this Yom HaShoah today. And for us it's important to know that you remember what we remember and the way we remember it. Because until now, although we refer to the same events, they were not the same in their literature or in ours. Take an example, the Crusades. Uh, I was teaching one day about, about a team of suffering in history, and we came to the Crusades. It was amazing. You open the Catholic Encyclopedia, and the Crusades are pages of glory. You open the Jewish Encyclopedia, and these are pages of torment and suffering and humiliation. So now they realize that those days and those acts and those endeavors against the Jews did not bring them honor. We recognize that true repentance must involve actions and not just words. We ask God, the God of Israel, to forgive us and to help us embrace the future with actions that make good our repentance here today. We recognize that we are also here for the future in that we must protect future Christian generations from the scourge and the evil of anti-Semitism. Therefore, by shouldering our generational responsibilities before God, we are indeed and hopefully ensuring that no future evil will befall the Jewish people in the name of Christendom. May God help us all. <laughs>